means there is less uh, territory for a future Palestinian state. Now, what we're seeing here is the facts on the ground have not changed over the past uh, years. Now, this is only the rhetoric that has changed. We're seeing very clear statements from President Obama and also uh, from Secretary of State Clinton there uh, saying there will be no, Im no uh, increases in settlements. But we're also seeing very clear statements from the Israeli side saying they need this natural growth. So basically, we're seeing what we've seen all along but the rhetoric is much stronger and both sides are dealing with this head-on very early on in their terms which is significant. Tony? Well, Paula is the, the no exceptions on settlements. Uh, this demand as much of a game changer in the U.S. Israeli dynamic as it uh, appears at first read? Not necessarily, no. We've heard this before and mm. we've certainly heard it from the, uh, the Palestinians constantly saying the settlements have to stop growing. If you consider there's almost half a million settlers within the West Bank and East Jerusalem alongside uh, the, the Palestinians that live there, and each time a new settlement is built, that is territory that the Palestinians need for their future state, which the U.S. wants, which the international community wants, and which uh, Israel in the past has said they want as well, this two-state solution. Some people I've spoken to in the West Bank say that uh, if this continues as it is going at the moment, the settlements keep springing up, then their state is going to look something like a Swiss cheese because wow. these settlements are right in the middle of the West Bank and this is just not viable to have a continual strip of land that the Palestinians can call their gotcha. own. All right, Paula Hancock's for us in Jerusalem. Paula, appreciate it. Thank you. So clearly the road to Mideast peace goes straight through Israeli settlements. Live now to our White House correspondent, Suzanne Malvo. And Suzanne, uh, why is this administration taking on uh, the issue of settlements in this way? No more settlement activity on Palestinian territory, and that includes natural growth. It really is a line, if you will, that they're drawing in the sand here because so many uh, different parts of the community as well as uh, those who've been involved in the negotiations believe that that is the only way that you're going to satisfy uh, the Palestinians, that it's the only way that you really are going to bring them together. You know that they're split Gaza as well as the West Bank, that there has got to be uh, some sort of uh, effort on the Israelis' part to basically stop the expansion of those settlements. We've heard it from President Obama. We've heard it from the Secretary of State. We're also going to hear it from the Palestinian pres President Mahmoud Abbas. And Tony, the one thing that they are going to try to do today desperately is try to bolster Abbas's credibility uh, back at home. This is somebody who really the Palestinian community very much split. Hamas, as you know, controlling Gaza. Uh, this is somebody whose term was up uh, back in January, his four-year term. The law says perhaps he can continue until next January, mm -hmm. but he faces a host of problems. And so what you're going to see President Obama do is simply sit by him, stand by him, try to make him uh, more of a player here, a real active player in this dialogue to give him some heft when he goes back home because yeah. that really is going to be uh, the main issue here and whether or not they can push that. It doesn't matter if, uh, if Abbas says, I want those settlements to stop. It's got to be uh, President Obama and it's got to be a stronger Abbas. That is the feeling here at the White House. Yeah, and Suzanne, we've in another element here. The president will be leaving soon for the Middle East and he will also be giving some real consideration to a, a Saudi a peace proposal. Well, certainly one of the things that's so important about the trip that is coming up is that the first stop is going to be Saudi Arabia. He's going to be meeting with uh, King Abdullah there. And there is a plan that's basically been in existence for the last seven years or so. It's been on the table. There are some countries, the Arab countries, that are very much in support of it, the Palestinians as well. Uh, it is a more comprehensive plan. Uh, at least uh, some at least some people view it that way but one of the demands is that the Israelis give back a portion of the land uh, that was uh, seized 40 years ago back to the Palestinians it's not something that the Israelis have said they are willing to do uh, but that would be in exchange uh, for normalizing relations with many of the Arab mm -hmm. nations many of the Arab nations they're on board here that's going to be a very difficult sell. So what you're going to see President Obama do is really try to work with the Saudis in crafting something that is more acceptable to the Israelis. You're also going to see Tony, he's going to be traveling to Egypt. That is where he's going to make a major uh, policy speech when it comes to laying out the U.S. policy in the Middle East. This is what was billed as uh, the, the speech to the Muslim 
world. It was yeah. supposed to happen the first 100 days, slipped a little bit, but this is really supposed to set the table here for those Israeli and Palestinian talks. Well, right? this, this president promised to be fully engaged in this process, and so he is. Our White House correspondent, <laughs> Suzanne Malveaux, for Suzanne, appreciate it. Thank you. Sure. And very quickly, uh, look, let's call it what it is. A bit of breaking news here. Let's get you to our severe weather center right now, and Reynolds Wolf is there. And Reynolds, are you really?